Solutions Aquarium, sponsored by Aquarium Cabinet Solutions and Fit Filtration in association with My Aquarium Box. How's it going guys and welcome to another update on The Wife. Now today's update is an update that you're probably going to want to watch on your own. Now if you've got a significant other that doesn't know how much you spend on your hobby, now is probably the time to turn this video off. Because in today's video, we're going to be breaking down the cost of the wife. Now before we get going guys, don't forget I'm currently running a contest on the channel where you've got the opportunity to win this innovative marine Nouveau 16 Aquarium. All you've got to do is click on the video link that has just popped up on your screen or find the link in the description below, take part in the contest and you've got a chance of winning this aquarium. Now if you're from the States, obviously I can't ship this aquarium over to you guys over there but still take part because I'm going to give you guys the opportunity to win your very own My Aquarium box. So get your entries in before the contest closes on the 4th of August. Right, so let's get going. So first of all, what we're going to start off is with the tank itself. So the tank is a fit filtration built 7 foot tank by 2.5 foot wide by 2.5 foot high tank. This tank cost 1000 220 pounds so that's how much the tank cost lighting these lights are the Kello AO 100 lights they're a dense matrix LED light and they cost 250 pounds each so that's a thousand pounds in total because we've got four uh, next up Inside the tank just over there, we've got the Maxspec Gyra. It is actually the Maxspec Gyra 130, not the 150. So it is a little bit underpowered for my system, so I am going to have to get a second one, uh, or a, at least another you know, 150. The Maxspec Gyra cost me £214. Now at the moment you can see that there's a Voyager 8 powerhead in there. I've had that for a long time, and I've just put that in there uh, temporarily whilst I'm building up the funds again to be able to purchase another Maxspec Gyra. So we're not going to include that in the price because I haven't actually purchased that right now. That's something that's been in my, uh, my box of tricks and I've just brought that out temporarily. So moving down into the sump area, this is where a lot of the money has been spent. Now this is the life support to the wife, so obviously we've had to make sure that everything's here that we need. Now starting over here, in this section, this is the first sump. We've got two sumps all together. This is the refugium section for the wife. Now this is where I'm going to be keeping all of my algae. So I'm going to be growing all my macro algae in here. You can see some at the moment now. This is all uh, uh, Kato, Cheeto, whatever you call it. Um, we've got that growing in there. We're going to have all sorts of life growing in this tank. You know, we're going to have, you know, copepods, rotifers, loads of different types of microfauna. This area is going to be teeming with life, and anything that overflows from this system will go into this system, and then eventually will go into the main display, which will be great for feeding various different types of fish, especially my copper band butterfly. So. Up at the top just there, we've got a UFO hydroponics grow light. Now, this is a great light for growing macroalgae. Now, I was originally thinking about taking this light off and swapping it with something else because it has a pink glow. Now, because I don't have boards on the system just yet, that pink glow is obviously leaking out into the room and in the evening time is quite irritating. But you guys out there said, don't take it off. Keep it, it's perfect for growing your macro, macro algae. You know, do something just to cover it up temporarily until you get your boards. And I've listened to you guys on that one, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. So, that guy over there cost me £49.99. So, moving over into the second sump, and this is the main sump system. This is where we've got all of our different types of equipment. Just here, starting on the right hand side, we've got the Genio R200 skimmer. Now this skimmer is an absolute beast and uh, I wasn't originally going to turn it on for a first couple of months but I couldn't help myself and I wanted to know how it performed and it is performing really, really well. Obviously we've got a lot of fish in the system already so the waste that they're producing, this is doing a really good job of getting rid of that. So this Genio R200 skimmer cost me £400. 
Moving over a little bit more, we've got the Kimura Uplifter Pump. This is what I'm going to be using to feed my calcium reactor. And this little guy costs £280. Just here, we've got the Ultra Reef Reactor. Now, there's nothing actually in this reactor at the moment. I've just turned it on for demonstrational purposes. But this Ultra Reef Reactor cost me £95. Just here, we have got Bio Home Media. In here, we've got about four kilos of bio home media. Um, this costs 15 pounds and 99 pence per kilo. Just over here, we've got my calcium reactor. This is the Genio CA Master 160, and this cost me 450 pounds. Behind it, we've got the JBO, or well, what is called JCOD now, DCT 12,000 return pump, and that cost me £120. Just over here, we've got my pH controller. This is going to be used in conjunction with my calcium reactor. Um, it's not actually connected up at the moment because um, the probe that I've got is just a little bit too big for the calcium reactor, so I need a new probe. I've just turned it on for demonstrational purposes. This was actually um, a good little buy which I got off eBay. Um, it was on an eBay auction and I actually managed to pick this up for £30. Just here we've got the CO2 bottle that we're going to be using to power the calcium reactor. I picked this up off a friend called Mark. I got this for £30 so I got that nice and cheap and it only cost me £5 to fill it up with CO2. All the pipe work for this system the pipe work that runs from the wife down into the sump and also the pipe work that runs back up to the wife with the all the manifolds that I've got here. That in total cost me £120. Just here we've got the frame that's holding the wife up. It consists of a mixture of scaffolding pipe and timber. The scaffolding pipe is what is holding the wife up. That is the main support. And then the timber is used just so that I can mount things with inside the cabinet. You know, it just makes it easier for me to be able to screw pipes to and, you know, plugs to, etc, etc. So, the total cost of this frame was £220. So, moving over to the power section, or the plug board. Just up at the top here, we've got a uh, Sander ozone unit. That cost £50. Just next to it, we've got the Belkin Wi-Fi router. Now, that was originally placed there to be used in conjunction with a Senai, but I've not ended up going with a Senai, so at the moment it's a little bit redundant, but it's nice to have there just in case, you know, I may decide to go with an all-in-one controller at some point, so, you know, it's there just in case. That itself, I haven't included in the price because I already had that lying around the house, so um, I didn't actually buy that for this system. Moving down to the bottom of the plug board, we've got the Simply Aquaria temperature controller. Now, I don't think I could ever run a system without a temperature controller ever again. Um, relying on the thermostat inside heaters for me, I don't want to do it anymore. Using one of these guys is the only way to go for me from now on. So the Simply Aquaria temperature controller cost me 40 pounds. Now the cost of building this power board, including all of the plugs and the wires and things like that, ended up costing £90. So moving back up to the main display, we've got the rock work. Now for rock, I ended up going for pure rock, and pure rock costs £6.99 per kilo. I got 60 kilos in total, so that cost me £419. Now we've got all the equipment out of the way and all the hard stuff, now it's time to move on to the livestock. Now, when we're starting off with livestock, there's only one place that we can start really, isn't there? And that is with Jeff. Now Jeff, as you know, I've had for a while. I've had Jeff for well over a year now. And I wasn't actually going to include Jeff in the cost of this tank, but I thought, why not? He's here, he's part of the furniture. So Jeff, when I bought him a year ago, actually cost me £90. But to buy Jeff now, at the size that he is, you're probably looking more about £150. Next up, we've got a female and a male blue throat trigger. 
Now the female and male came as a pair, so I got those for £100. Then we've got the little barrier tank. The little barrier tank cost me £55. The Blanc Aso tank cost me £75. The Regal Tang is another tang that I've had for a while. I've had the Regal Tang for, as, for longer than I've had Jeff. Uh, the Regal Tang cost me £50 when I originally bought it and probably would cost around about the same price, if not a tiny bit more today. Six Chromis. The Six Chromis, again, I've had for a while, but they cost me £20 when I bought them originally. The Flame Angel, the Flame Angel cost me £45. The Copper Band Butterfly, the Copper Band Butterfly cost me £45. I've got a Blue Spot Goby in here, who you all know as Moody Face. Moody Face is another fish that I've had for way over a year. He originally cost me £20. I got a Tiger Goby, which cost me £36. And I got a green Montipora plate, which cost me £30. And the size of the Montipora plate, £30 was an absolute steal. So guys, that's nearly the end of the video. We've just got one more thing to look at, and that is this. This is the HANA Alkalinity Test Kit. And this cost £55. Now, this bad boy, I really, really like. Now, when I had the previous wife, I never got around to getting one of these because of the cost. I thought, why spend £55 on something when I can go and spend something like £20 on a Sally Fur test kit? What's the point? You know, but since actually getting one and using it, I'm going to read my words. Using this test kit has been one of the best experiences ever. And like I've said before, if something's easy for us to do, we'll do it. If something's a bit of a pain or a chore, you know, we'll tend to avoid it. Lots of us tend to avoid testing our tanks just because, you know, it's just a little bit of a pain. This bad boy, honestly, it makes it so, so easy. You can test your alkalinity in about a minute. Honestly, it's really, really good and it's bob on accurate. I've been testing my alkalinity something like every other day because it's so easy. Um, and when I start filling this tank up with SPS, this is really going to come into its own. So I'm really, really chuffed to bits with this. So guys, we're nearly at the end of the video. And as you may have noticed, I didn't actually mention the white cheat tank in the costume. Now, you guys will know that last week I mentioned that the white cheat tank had white spot. Unfortunately, the white cheat tank passed away yesterday. Um, the white cheat tank was already suffering with a big scar down its side where it's caught itself on the rock, so it was having to deal with that. Obviously, it was having to deal with the hierarchy of the tank, everybody trying to work out the dominance over each other, and then having to deal with the white spot parasite as well was just too overwhelming for the fish, and unfortunately, he has passed away. Now the rest of the fish are doing very well, as you can see, they're very active, they're swimming around, you know, white spot is present in the system, but I'm treating that at the moment with Polyp Lab Medic. So the white spot parasite that is um, swimming around in the water will be killed by the Polyp Lab Medic. The fish are obviously a lot less stressed now, so their immune systems are a lot better, so it's going to be a lot harder for the white spot parasite to attack the fish. So over time, the white spot parasite's number will start to dwindle, and obviously the white spot won't be as much of an issue. So, you know, that's something that we're going to be watching and monitoring over the next few weeks to come. Right guys, so that's the end of the video. As you can see, the wife has cost over £5,500 so far, and we're not anywhere near finished yet. So how much more is it going to cost? Who knows? Now one thing that I have forgotten about, and that is the clownfish. I also forgot about the clownfish in the last update. The clownfish actually are in the system, they're over there on the far end. I keep forgetting about them because they're tucked away in the corner, right at the back down there. And every time I do these updates, I just completely forget about them. The clownfish are actually there. There's three clownfish in the system, and I paid eight pounds each for those clownfish. Right guys, that is the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching, I really do appreciate it. But for now, I'll catch you all later.